Hello and welcome to Verbling. Hi. Uh, Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, nice hi. to see you again. Nice, nice to see you, Artemis. <laughs> yeah. Feel free okay. to call me Dimas. It will be Dimas. easier for you, I guess. Yeah. No, no. No. There's a famous show called Wild Wild West I loved as a little kid. And one of the main characters, there was uh, James West, and then there was Artemis. Oh, really? Artemis Gordon. He was a genius who made all kinds of inventions. And uh, yeah. yeah. Could you please type it in? So I could, what, I could Google it later after this class. It's, a it's an old television show. Actually, they remade it as a movie. Uh, okay. Ten years back, it wild, wild west. Oh, I see. And his name is spelled differently, but his name in the, in the character, he's a fictional fictional character, Artemis Gordon. It's one of okay. one of my favorite fictional characters, actually. Uh, I see. Yeah. yeah, you got it right. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Yeah. Excuse me. Anyway, uh, we are here today at Verbling to look at uh, the purpose of this class is uh, TOEFL writing. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to talk about how to go about getting a decent score in the TOEFL writing. Specifically today, we will focus on the integrated task. And there are two essays that you need to write for TOEFL. Yeah. First, the first one, the first task is the integrated task. You will read uh, a brief passage. They'll give you three minutes to read. Uh, again, on an uh, academic topic, everything is academic topics. Everything are, they're all academic topics in the TOEFL. So uh, anyway, you'll read a brief reading passage. They'll give you three minutes, and then you'll listen to a lecture for about three minutes. And mm -hmm. your task is to, in 20 minutes, you must write uh, 150 to 225, at least 150 words to 225 words, uh, basically just reporting. Okay, there should be no first person, I, me, mine in the integrated task. You're not supposed to give your opinion. That's tomorrow's class. That's the independent task. That's the other one. Mm -hmm. In the integrated task, you're basically just reporting information. What are you reporting? The lecturer will either agree with the reading and he will add additional information, points, or examples. Or, conversely, he will disagree with the reading passage and he will counter the points with, uh, all right, contrary points or examples or information. Uh, okay, now, that's what you're going to do. Now, in TOEFL, <sighs> There's really no reward uh, in, uh, as uh, frankly, as opposed to IELTS or some of the other exams, CAE, there's a certain risk versus reward element. If, if you try riskier sentence structures, riskier vocabulary and vocabulary collocations, there is, is possible rewards to be had. You, that's really, in IELTS, that's how you get that nine score. You have mm. to take chances to get a nine yeah. in IELTS. TOEFL, not so much. Not at all. In fact, there, there really is no risk versus reward. There is really no point in trying to be overly poetic or um, really to try to do too much. There's no point. They want you to stick to a very straightforward, formulaic answer. I see. Taking extra risks can only lose you points. It can't gain you anything. So don't try to overdo it. 
Don't try to impress them because it's pointless. Uh, it's completely pointless. The so whole idea you said that in IELTS you don't have a limited time to maybe to write an essay. Oh, you do. You, yeah, I do. Yeah, in the IELTS writing exam, you also have two tasks. Again, the first one's reported information in the academic test. Okay. That is. Um, and then the second one is opinion, just the second one in TOEFL's opinion. You have uh, one difference in IELTS, you have a little more time. Yeah. Uh, you have an hour to do those two, uh, two requirements. But they give you more time, but they more heavily score you on vocabulary and a grammar, sentence structure, sentence construction. So it helps you to try to use more unusual vocabulary and sentence structures. Um, I see. So, so what you mean? Uh, uh, like, so, please correct me if I'm wrong. So, if I don't do, you know, don't offer do in IELTS, so I will, you know, I'm going to get a decent score instead of a maximum score is right. that right i think you've got it backwards i else <laughs> you, you want to take some chances yeah. in fact you're rewarding yeah. for trying to you're rewarded in i else for trying to use an idiom but you mess it up actually if you don't try to use an idiom you get a six if you try and you get it completely wrong you get a seven if you try and you get it right yeah. you get an eight i mean in general to illustrate in TOEFL, no. If you try to use an idiom and you get it right, it's just the same as if you never tried at all. So it's pointless to try. TOEFL is boring and dry <laughs> and formulaic. It, I highly suggest for TOEFL speaking and writing um, that students memorize a template to follow. And we're going to do that today. We're going to look at a template. And then we're going to look at information yeah. Please. in regards to that template. All right, how that works with the template. I, I would never suggest this for an IELTS exam. Um, um, a basic template, a basic idea, but not as clearly defined as what I'm about to share with you. Actually, that's a good intro. Let me let me share that template with you. I want to show you the template to, so you get the idea. And then we're going to actually look at a reading, read something together. I'm going to do a lecture. And a, if you don't have, please grab paper and a pencil and make notes. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, I practice. do have one right now. Please okay. proceed. Okay. Well, first of all, we're going to look at the template because I want to show you, I want to point out very clearly what you need to be making notes about. Both in speaking and in task one in writing, your note-taking ability, your ability to hear and make cohesive notes is really crucial. <laughs> um, okay, so what are you making notes of? Well, let's look at the template. This is what they expect from you. We're looking at the template for when a lecturer disagrees with the reading. Actually, I this is totally just my opinion, but I personally, I think about two thirds of the time you're gonna, it's much more likely you're going to get a lecturer who argues against the reading rather than for it. But that just, that's hearsay, that's just from talking to students and personal experience, et cetera. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, here, here we go. So here's a template for casting down in a lecture. The question is always the same. Here it is, summarize the points made in the lecture explaining how they cast doubt on the reading. Um, the opposite, summarize the points made in the lecture, explain how they support the reading. The question is really simple. So, the template, of course, all 
academic writing, uh, you need to have the basic paragraphing structure, an introductory paragraph, supporting paragraphs, and finally a concluding paragraph. That is a must. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, again, with the paragraphing, look, there are four areas they're scoring your writing on. This is, may sound odd, but one of them, are you actually answering the question? That's 25%. The second one is, are you organized? Are you paragraphing? That's like 25% of your score. <laughs> Just knowing how to paragraph. Third is organizing using transitions and signal words and signal phrases, like in the bold print, as we look at this template, uh, these, this is what we're talking about in the third area of scoring. Only 25% of your score has to do with the vocabulary you use and the grammatical structure, sentence construction. It's very small part, relatively yeah. speaking. Yes, that's why you said it is pointless to offer to in the, what is it? Yeah. grammar or vocabulary that's exactly that's right yeah. that's exactly right because the way they score it all right uh the template all right introduction we have to open with our topic sentence in the lecture the take your pick professor teacher instructor made several points about what's the topic um okay gemstones uh whatever it is it's going to be academic life cycle of the dinosaur, whatever it is. Uh, all right. So uh, just an overall very general statement. Remember that your main focus, you have to be answering the question. So this is part of category one in scoring. Are you, in, are you, they're asking you summarize the points made in the lecture. Okay. And then how does it relate to the reading? So, and this is always the case. So you're going to want to refer to the lecture. In the lecture, okay, what was it? The lecture, you talked about what? Uh, okay, state the main ideas of the lecture. The professor argues that, contends. Okay, you need to uh, memorize, you need to know a number of uh, uh, verbs that mean basically argues, contends, cast doubt. You'll see a bunch as we continue. <laughs> uh, um, okay, he contends that mm, whatever. It is better to raise uh, endangered species in captivity. Whatever the professor's main point is. Then you need to, you're relating it to reading. So just, you're following the question here, actually. Uh, however, so there's your transitional, there's your signal word. However, oh, here comes a contrasting point. The reading contends that, whatever, the opposite, that this is not true. So uh, then you need, finally, your last sentence. Uh, the professor's lecture casts doubt on the reading by using a number of points that are contrary to the main idea of the reading. Basically, as you can see, using this template, basically you're just filling in some blanks, but you, you pretty much should know exactly what you're going to say before you ever enter the test facility. I see. All right. It's always the same. They don't do any other varieties other than the lecturer agrees or the lecturer disagrees. That's it. It's the only difference. So in note taking for the first paragraph, what do you have to know? Well, quite obviously, the topic. And what is the, in the second sentence, what is the focus of the lecturer, of the professor? That's it. The reading is pretty easy, the main idea. So, okay, this information is going to come in the beginning. 
the beginning of the reading, and then again in the beginning of the lecture. Okay, then your body paragraphs. Every body paragraph is pretty much the same. Uh, all right, you're just going to use different transitionals. That's all. Um, these, uh, okay, the first point, very good. First of all, firstly, all right, the first important aspect, however you want to say it, fine, but you should introduce it. Uh, the first point that the professor uses to cast out on the reading is that blah, 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 point number one. Uh, according to the professor, okay, and then some detail. All right. Opposing point from the reading, uh, this, you can use a, rel you can use a, um, you can use a pronoun. All right. Uh, a demonstrative. This differs from the reading in that the reading states what is the equivalent or equal point of the reading. All right, or the point that's being argued, if the lecturer is disagreeing, or the point that's being supported, if the lecturer agrees. Uh, and then, the, and then again, the relationship. Again, even in your body paragraphs, mentioning the lecture first, a little detail, relating it to the reading, and explaining why they're different. The point made by the professor cast out on the reading because. Uh, obviously, black is opposite from white, whatever the reason is. And basically, that's it for the body paragraphs. Um, two, three body paragraphs, two or three body paragraphs is normal. Probably three is more normal. Because there's going to be uh, at least two, two to four main points where the lecturer either agrees or disagrees. Each point that you're able to capture in your notes means equals another paragraph for you. Hmm. All right, so obviously when I am making notes, I actually write on my piece of paper P1 and then hmm. dash and then just a couple keywords. I, I can't, I don't know about you, but I cannot write full sentences while I'm listening. I just write a keyword or maybe a collocation of two words that I know is a key point. And, after, and then below that, I write D1 for detail one. And I add some example. Usually it's an example, could be just extra detail. All right, so I have something to write here. Um, so when, when you do, when you do the reading, uh, you can catch the points, uh, you can also make notes during the reading, you can do the same exact thing. So this will help you, you know what the main points are in the reading, you can listen for what the lecturer is going to agree with or disagree with. Okay, that's basically it. And rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. There's going to be at least two points, two to four. There may be two, three, or four main points. That will designate how many body paragraphs you have. The conclusion is actually quite simple. It can be quite short. Uh, back to your topic sentence that you started with, basically rephrase it again with the correct signal phrase. In conclusion, the points made in the lecture contrast with the reading. So you can pretty much memorize that. Um, and then mention or summarize the, the two points, demonstrate that the main idea from the reading is in doubt. Uh, okay, notice nowhere are you giving your opinion about this. And so is it okay if there's only one sentence for the con conclusion paragraph? Well, two, I would suggest two. But two sentences would not be abnormal at all. Okay. Um, that would be, that's what they want, frankly. This is all they want you to do. Keep it simple. What you really, really have to focus on is your notes and also focus on knowing 
these argues that, contends that, casts doubt on. Okay, the first point, according to, all right? Do you need to have these kinds of phrases? According to, the lecturer differs from the reading, the reading states, the reading says, the reading relates, the reading observes, the reading contends. All these kinds of verbs you should have at your disposal. You don't want to use the same word over and over again. You don't want to say, the lecturer says, the reading says, the lecturer says, the reading says, the lecturer says, the reading says. That's not going to help you at all. That's about it. That's about it for the range of vocabulary they're looking for from you. Honestly, they're not looking for enough, a lot. Again, the, the body paragraph, another point that the professor uses to cast doubt. Okay, the professor claims that. There's another verb. The reading states the point is contradicted by. All right, knowing all these little phrases will help you enormously. Uh, okay, you know what? So much for that. Let's, let's, let me now share an example of what kind of information you're going to be looking at. And uh, we'll practice. <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, hang on, I'm going to do screen share. We're going to look at the reading first. Actually, uh, first thing that's going to happen, uh, you'll hear the narrator. By the way, pay attention to the narrator. Most people just space out or disregard the narrator. Don't. He is extremely likely to give you some really good um, keywords and in, in, in listening, in the writing, in the speaking. The narrator frequently gives away freebies, excellent keywords that you can use. Plus, he's helping you predict what you're gonna hear. So, you'll hear the narrator. Now read the passage about the first grain-based food. You have three minutes to read the passage. Begin reading now. He sounds just like that. I, <laughs> See. Okay. Uh, okay, let's uh, take a read. I'm going to do the lecture, so I, I guess there's just the two of us. We can take turns. All right, can you start? Okay. So I read please. this? Yeah, go ahead, please, okay, Dimas. So, um, okay. Scan physical evidence remains of the first human domestication of green. Still, there is enough to conclude that ancient peoples, uh, no, no, still, there is enough to conclude that ancient peoples, motiv motivated by the nutritional value of bread or cake, cakes made of wild wheat, look for controlled ways to grow it to provide a consistent food supply. Three related discoveries are likely to have led to the introduction of bread as the first grain based food. Okay. Uh, a comment. Wherever you see a number, there are a few reasons. There are three reasons. There are two main contradictions. There, whatever. If you hear a number, there they are about to give you some absolutely crucial information, and this goes for every aspect of the test. The listening section. If you're reading, the reading section. Whatever. If you hear a number, all right, led to the introduction of bread as the first green based food. Okay, I know two things now. I know um, the narrator told me grain based food is the basic topic. I now know the introduction of bread is the focus. I would write that intro mm -hmm. bread on it. And uh, I also know I am ready to hear three discoveries because now I know how many points are going to be mentioned three they told me uh, okay I, I said we can take turns reading so I will notice how the next paragraph begins the first discovery okay and then from there finally they do the same thing the lecturer will do the same thing when he's speaking he will introduce the main ideas with transitional signal words and signal phrases. So not only will it help your writing aspect, it will help your comprehension aspect. 
Everything is signal. They're not going to surprise you with main points. All right. The first discovery was that wheat could be prepared for use by grinding. People probably began consuming wheat by chewing it raw. Because wheat is very hard, they gradually discovered that it was less trouble to eat if crushed to paste between two stones. The result would have been the ancestor of the drier, more powdery wheat flour we use today. Uh, okay, let's just take turns. Go ahead and continue, please. Okay. From there, it was a short step to the next breakthrough, picking the simple spread, which requires no technology but life, but fire, loaves of wet pot. No, sorry, loaves of wet paste when baked into bread, could be stored for long periods, certainly longer than raw seeds. This kept the, this kept the food value of wet available for an extended period after it had been harvested. Okay. Finally, ancient peoples found that if the paste was allowed to sit in the open, yeast spores from the air settled on it and began fermenting the wheat. This natural process of fermentation caused bubbles to form in the wheat paste that suggested it, it would be lighter in texture and even easier to eat when baked. Okay, uh, now the narrator comes back. Now listen to a part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. All right, I am actually going to remove the screen share and do the lecture for you. Okay. But by now, you should Could you give me a minute to read once again the reading passage because I don't really get it, you know. But I'm the kind of okay. cat that cannot read a lot out of loud, out loud uh -huh. Uh -huh. and understand the passage at once. Okay. 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 I see. Thank you. And I, I'm sorry if I'm distracting you, but for those scoring at home, <laughs> of course, the second, if I'm making notes, which I said is key, all right, I know my uh, main focus, the introduction of bread. As soon as I heard three, I would actually write down the numbers one, two, three on my blank piece of paper. And then for one, uh, each paragraph, I would write down a a keyword and maybe a detail word. Okay. So, you know, keywords like grinding, uh, paste, who knows. Uh, additionally, when you're making your notes, uh, I frequently, in, and again, in the whole exam, listening, speaking, writing, I frequently use arrows okay. in my notes. Okay. I frequently use arrows in my notes to show um, either sequence, time sequence, or to show um, cause and effect because very often they're talking about a time sequence or a cause and effect situation. Okay, so for here, I might actually incorporate arrows into my notes. All right, okay, and then uh, the next step, bread, all right, great. Um, all right, maybe detail food value, uh, I don't know. Just because you make notes don't mean you have to use them, by the way. And then number three, okay, uh, obviously fermentation is key here, okay? Easy to eat, I don't know, texture. You may choose different words that you use to incorporate into your writing than I'm right now suggesting, but uh, that's, I just wanna give you the idea that basically, my notes would consist of, after the reading, I'd, I'd have maybe half a dozen words, eight words. That's it. Um, okay. okay. Uh, and now I will do the lecture part. So get ready to make some notes. Okay. Okay. A one, a two, a three. <sighs> 
Okay. Conventional wisdom says that a very primitive kind of bread was the first grain food that human societies ate. But, you know, for the last few decades, there's been an alternative hypothesis that quite a few anthropologists are starting to give a closer look. That hypothesis says that it was, that it was in fact, beer, not bread, that was the first grain food. Sound strange? Consider a couple of things. For one thing, you don't have to grind wheat to make it easier to eat. If you keep it in a moist environment, it naturally starts sprouting, with a new baby plant splitting the hard seed case in half. Sprouted wheat is sweeter, softer, and actually more nutritious than whole wheat seeds. And it would have developed without human effort. In order to discover the usefulness of ground wheat, someone had to get the bright idea of crushing it. To discover the usefulness of sprouted wheat, people had to do nothing. Just let it sit. What do you think happened first? Another thing. What turns grain into beer is fermentation and wheat begins to ferment almost as soon as it's stored from water and yeasts in the air. After the wheat sprouted, it would have started to ferment. The process would have been obvious because of the bubbles and foam that formed. People could have experimented by tasting it and discovering the first beer. And even if you assume that people were already grinding wheat to paste, Think about it. The paste ferments and bubbles. Is it likely that early people would have thought to fire it before eating? We're used to cooking our food, but in prehistoric times, the idea that you would take fire and apply it to food to improve it for eating was not obvious. But that's it. Uh, okay, and then you're going to hear the lecture. Summarize the points made in the lecture you just heard, explaining how they cast doubt on the contents of the reading. Uh, also, you may refer to the passage as you write. Now, uh, so there's a point I forgot to add earlier. You are allowed to look at the reading while you're while you're actually doing your writing. Actually, it appears on the left-hand column. There's a bigger, like one-third sidebar will have the reading, and then you will be writing on the computer in the uh, right-hand two-thirds of the screen. And a little count countdown timer so you know how much time you have. Okay. That's it. So, uh, how are we going to write this? Uh, <laughs> mm, uh, okay. So, uh, okay, uh, Demas, let's again yeah. take a look at our take a look at our template here. <laughs> All right. So, fill in the blank. Uh, Topic sentence, uh, okay. How would you write it? Your first sentence. So, I just read it. In the lecture, the the professor made several points about the first grand base food. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the topic. In the next sentence, you're going to mention the controlling idea. All right, All right, so two. Okay, so the professor argues that the beer that beer is the first grain based food instead of the bread as explained in the reading passage. Okay, and you use instead of the Bread as explained as explained instead of contents. Okay, you're uh, clearly you're you're combining two and three, right? And that's okay. That's okay. I see. 
That's all right. You're using uh, as a connective to connect the ideas you're, you're saying instead of, instead of yeah. however. Um, okay, great. You're still using transitions. That's still showing a clear transition of ideas. Uh, okay. And um, fine. And that leads us to the thesis statement of the introductory paragraph. Here, number four. Um, I'm not really sure about this because, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite ca catch the idea. Okay. So what? Green moss brought nutrition without help. <laughs> Uh, you know, again, you're you're in the introductory paragraph. You, you take it easy. You still got to be talk, talking general. Don't. Okay. Oh, well, that makes me, allows me to make a very important point. Do not introduce any of your points you're going to bring up in body paragraphs in your first paragraph. Just don't. Stay general. Stay very general. Uh, yeah, save your ammunition. <laughs> Oh yeah, I I thought that we have to, uh, we are talking uh, for the second paragraph. No, not yet. We 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 need our thesis statement here, right? and I'll I'll help you out here. Okay. All right. So the professor's lecture cast stops on the reading by using a number of points that are contrary to to the reading passage. Okay, you could say that, but you try to give a little bit more detail. Contrary, maybe, to the idea that bread was the first uh, grain food. I see. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Uh, okay, let's, let's continue. Um, hello, Ken. Yes, hello. <laughs> Welcome to the class. Thank you. Uh, Okay, um, well, welcome to the class, but I think you're, ha, have you been following along? Uh, kind of, uh, the, how to write essay or thesis? Yeah, okay, but um, we've already looked at a reading passage and, and listened to a lecture, so we're now collectively writing our essay, so it's going to be a little deep, hard for you to, if you haven't seen the the reading or listen to the lecture, it'll be a little, <laughs> I was going to say challenging for you to write sentences. Uh, Let me change that. Let me say impossible. Well, I, I, <laughs> I took uh, some uh, academic essay classes before. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. My point is you don't know the actual material we're writing about, the specific. Uh -huh. But you can you can hang out. You can help us if, if possible. So, uh, Demas, I don't think he, he knows what was, he didn't see the reading or hear the lecture. So basically it's up to you. You're the hero of the day. Um, <laughs> all right. So body paragraph, your first point. Uh, all right, using, again, using the template. Okay. What do you think the first point, all right, again, just follow the template. The first point, you can say it another way. Um, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Demas. Yeah. Try to use the sentence, but maybe even change some of the words around. Okay. For example, first of all, or firstly... First, yeah. First of all, was it? Uh, first of all, uh, according to the professor, when right. human let the grain uh, be exposed to the air, uh -huh. it will was it uh, sprout. Okay. And will it become softer even without help from people? That that's great. That is exactly the point. Terrific. Uh, all right. You you've basically just given me two sentences. One with the main point, it sprouts, 
and then it will become softer even without help. That's detail. That's great. That is a perfect scoring TOEFL writing answer. Great. And now, again, following the question, remembering that the question says uh, summarize the points made in the lecture and then explain how it relates to the reading. So, great. You're, you've explained what the lecturer says. Now, part three. Part three is... Okay. So, it differs from the reading in that the reading states that people need to what was it? Pass and cross green to make it become powder. Well, okay. Now see you're, you're all right. No, no, no. You're mixing up the details slightly. <laughs> see. All yeah. right. Okay. Um, the lecture. I'm okay. quite nervous here because. Okay, don't be nervous. You this can is say, life writing exercise. <laughs> yes, it is. You could say this point differs, so you can. It, it's okay to use um, referential phrases or actual pronouns. This differs from the reading, or the lecture differs from the reading, or this fundamental point differs from the reading. Whatever. Uh, the fact that um, this occurs naturally differs from the reading in that the reading says, the reading states, the reading contends that people first ground, grinding, ground, mm -hmm. grind, ground the wheat in order to eat it. Uh, okay. And then the and then the the final sentence of the paragraph to tie the two points together okay we'll give this one a try the point made by the professor cast up on the reading because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, well, you have it. You are, you you know, but you just don't know how to express it. Okay, because you said it already. Um, <laughs> because it's more logical. Remember that the lecturer is arguing, so you're just reporting the argument. Um, because the the lecture says it's simply more logical for human beings to do nothing. <laughs> And and allow the wheat to become more easily edible, rather than to go through all the work of grinding it, hmm. uh, which is the basic point. They would have to do nothing. Uh, okay, that that was definitely the first point. All right. Okay, so then a new paragraph. Uh, okay. Gonna, again, start with a signal phrase. Another point. Okay. Another point that the professor uses to cast up on the reading is uh, it's talk about fermentation, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Protein will make the food sweeter and more nutritious. No? So yes, that was a point he made. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Now, another point that the professor makes is that fermentation process is quite natural uh, and yeah. uh, will will happen even if even before the, the flower is ground while in the sprout stage okay uh, 
okay. Uh, what's another detail? Do you remember any details about that whole fermentation thing? Do you remember anything? Yeah. Did you write anything a, down? Yes, yes. I wrote about one week or whatever. Okay. One week for, for grain to be fermented. Okay. It only yes. takes about one week for the wheat to ferment. Great, that's a detail. Using, that's, using water and air. Using water and air. Terrific. Great. All right. Now, these detail things, the points, you, you really kind of got to get them right. But the extra little details, they may give two or three little details. It doesn't matter which exact one you use, frankly. Basically, the details are for padding out your writing. You need to have... Um, a certain number of words, 150 words minimum. Yeah. So, okay, not so important. The details are details. <laughs> yeah. They're not the main points. So, okay, then that, that was that's a good one. That's exactly the same one I was thinking of. Uh, okay, number three. Okay, w what is different that the reading states? However, uh, uh, however, the reading states. Which, uh, okay, it needs to be big. For example, yeah. using fire. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. What does the reading say? Well, let's cheat because you know what? We can cheat. In the real test, we can actually look. What does the reading say? I can't remember either. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's look. We can always look at the reading. Okay, so it's not cheating, really. What was the second point? Um, it has to do with fermentation. Let's take a look to make it easier on ourselves. No reason to torture ourselves. Um, okay, this is the second paragraph. Uh, okay, it was uh, next see, break. Think... Baking the simplest bread. The, uh, the, you're right. Fire. The second is, you know, uh, you don't need wheat to ferment the grain, while in the reading, you need wheat to ferment the, bread, the grain. Am I correct? I don't know. You, you lost me. Uh, <laughs> the, the, in the reading, it says people just chewed seeds, and he said they didn't chew seeds. They let it sprout. So you, you had that correct. I see. Uh, the second one, is, you're right. It's about fire. The reading says they use fire. In the, the lecture, he just said they let it sit there for a week, and they could see bubbles. Mm -hmm. And the, as you said, the air and the, and the, uh, the, air and the yeast in the air cause fermentation um, okay and then last the reading says now it mentions fermenting the wheat uh, okay whereas the, uh, the lecturer uh, mentions okay Uh, okay, the fire, they were mentioned out of order. Now, actually, this kind of happens. Actually, the reading, the, well, be aware of this. Actually, this is a very good point for TOEFL. Basically, the second paragraph of the reading mentions fire. But the lecturer, uh, here's the uh, transcript, the lecturer doesn't mention fire until the end. So the points are not countered one, one, two, two, three, three. It's in this case, it was more like one, one, two, three, three, two. Okay. He didn't go in the same order as the reading, which is confusing, but this is going to happen, actually. This is definitely going to happen. So, the prof do you understand what I'm saying? The professor won't n necessarily count, counter the points in the reading exactly in the same chronological order. Yeah. 
Yeah. So in my note here, I wrote fermentation as my second point and cooking as my third point. Yeah. So no maybe problem. I got it mixed up here. Yeah, which is easy to do. Uh, okay. Um, all right. For example, if you're making notes, now these are ridiculous notes. I would never even begin to say this. Don't write notes like this full sentences but this is example notes maybe i mean for some people this may work this is just my advice i would only use keywords um bread okay the reading says bread was the first grain based food example wheat is hard to eat people probably ground it into a paste wheat paste baked with fire was the second part wheat ferments na naturally makes it easier to eat when it's baked now, the lecturer says wheat doesn't need to be ground. We covered this. Sprouting wheat is easy to eat, tastes better than normal wheat. It's more nutritious. Doesn't matter. Again, the details, you may pick out different details. Takes no effort. Uh, easy to eat, easy to sprout. Again, details not that important. Just mm -hmm. get the main idea. Uh, point two, fermenting happens very quickly. People tasting the foam from fermenting may have created the first beer. All right. And then uh, and then the fire. So, right. So, three main points. So, we have to counter them. All right. Right. Um, so, we're going to counter point two with example three from the reading. Right. All right. So, okay. Should have mentioned that earlier. I forgot about that. This is very normal. Be very, very aware that they probably won't go in exactly the same order. Uh, okay. And then uh, our conclusion, of course, is going to be quite simple. Um, let me see. Uh, should we look at uh, Demas? Do you want to look at the low scoring response or the high scoring response? <laughs> Um, we'll uh, a uh, higher one. Yeah, let's look at the good one. All right, I'm with you. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, let's let's see what makes a high scoring response in the last five minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, in the lecture, there we go. Okay, introducing the professor makes several points about the first wheat product. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Doesn't okay. Doesn't have to be exactly like this. The first wheat uh, that was consumed or the first, okay, you can say it different ways. The professor argues that, okay, argues that beer was the first wheat product. Very, very direct, right, Demas? Yeah. The professor argues that beer was the first wheat product. You don't have to be too fancy. This is different from the reading, which states that bread came first. Very, very boring. <laughs> These are boring sentences. However, the teacher casts doubt on the reading with several points. But is this the most it seems exciting? So very repetitive, ever? you know. Seems very what? Repetitive because uh, in the first sentence, is is he wrote like you know makes several points about blah blah blah, and the last sentence in the first paragraph, he once again wrote. Blah, 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 with several points. Uh, um, no. Demons, I will concede the point that this seems repetitive. Guess what? Academic reading is repetitive. <laughs> English is repetitive. English speaking is repetitive. We're constantly repeating things we say. Mm -hmm. I just repeated that three times. <laughs> I see. That's good. That's, that's not bad. So even though that may intuitively sound bad, that's English. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's read on. First right. of all, okay, these are really, really crucial that you're using these signal phrases. First of all, the teacher says that wheat doesn't have to be ground. Very basic to the point. It is easy. It is easy to people to eat. Actually, this should be for people to eat. Notice the small preposition mistake here. 
to eat wheat when it sprouts. Uh, it is easy for people to eat when wheat when it sprouts. All right. This is not what the reading states. It says that early people ground wheat into a paste because it's hard to eat. Notice the mistakes. Uh, this should be a period, not a comma. Mm. It should be a new sentence. This is a this is a mistake of punctuation. Uh, it's hard to eat. It should be it it's is hard. hard to eat. Very good. You're correct. The lecture cast doubt on this by showing another way to eat wheat. Notice how straightforward and basic and simplified this is. This is not really technical. Uh, all right. He, he only makes, okay, here's another point. He only, you could have made three supporting paragraphs, right? There were three points. However, he only has two. That's okay. You must have at least two because they will give at least two points. But even if they give three, four points, you don't really absolutely need to have all of them. And if you combine a couple points together by accident or unintentionally, that's okay too. Also, the talk says that fermenting happens very fast. This fermenting leads to a foam, which people probably tasted as the first beer. In the reading, it is argued that fermenting made people think to bake the bread. The professor doubts this point by stating it is unlikely. All right. There's a total generality there. He says it's unlikely. He does. He explains why go through the effort. You don't have to. Finally, the professor argues that people would not think to bake the wheat. The point is made that early people do not cook things. These points made by the teacher cast out on the reading. It seems like beer, not bread, was the first wheat food. <laughs> now, not only that, actually, he's taking his third point and he's combining it with his conclusion, which you should not do. These should be separated here at the these. This should be two separate paragraphs. Hmm. Still, this is... Not absolutely perfect writing, obviously, but it would still score a five. Uh, what, why is this going to get a five? It is extremely well organized. Introduction, body, paragraphs, conclusion, the paragraphing. Uh, it, it uses appropriate transitions. Can't really overemphasize how important those are. Just paragraph and use appropriate transitions, you're going to get a good score. 199 words. Well, terrific. Um, more important, the author mentions several specific examples from the talk and shows that how they are different from the points in the reading. That level of detail is what's necessary to get a top score. Paragraph, use transitions. You've guaranteed yourself a three out of five. If you want a four or five, you've got to be able to add some of the details. Not all of them, and it doesn't matter which ones you add. As long as you get the main points and have some details, you're going to get a five. There it is. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. This essay is not perfect. The author had misspellings, uh, makes subject-verb agreement errors. The teacher cast out, it should be cast. Um, there's a punctuation error. Okay. There are four, five, six different errors in here, but still this would be a five, a perfect score. Good. Okay. So there you go. There you have it. Uh, all right. Okay. Thanks for hanging with me, Demas. We're gonna... Thank you for sharing. Okay. Sure. We're basically... For those interested, we'll be doing the same thing here on Verbling tomorrow at the same time, time slot. Okay. Yeah. So, so take care. You. Hope you learned something. All right.